before we start, uh, could you say a bit of a kind of brief recap of your martial arts background? Um, so I basically got started uh, first with Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. um, my, like, I, uh, like we had our little conversation earlier in the day today, I was saying my, my dad was looking for a legal way to beat my ass. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was kind of a, I was kind of a not the best little kid, you know. So about, in, about nine or so, I think, uh, was when we started. We actually started doing martial arts in a friend's garage. Oh. And uh, it was my brother and myself and actually a neighbor kid. Um, and then we, we only did that for a few months or so, um, but it was really tough. We were practicing on concrete floor and like no pads or nothing. We were, in, we were doing contact and stuff and hitting each other. And, uh, and then we, we decided, hey, let's go try out a, uh, an actual martial arts school. Yeah. And so all of us, m myself, my brother, the, the little neighbor friend of ours, um, the instructor that taught us in the garage and my dad all went together to an actual Taekwondo school. Yeah. And so my dad got to, to beat me up there and, right. <laughs> and <laughs> kick my butt. Um, so uh, I've been doing that for like 26 years now, doing the Taekwondo stuff. Yeah. Um, but in between all of that... Do, just before you continue, do you have like an official rank that you can oh, share? Oh, I'm, I'm a fifth or? degree. I'm a fifth degree black belt. Okay, cool. um, so, um, but in, the, in between all of that, I wrestled. Um, I have a black belt in Hapkido that mm -hmm. uh, has a lot of influence from Judo, Japanese Jiu-Jitsu, Aikido. Um, um, and I think what's worth mentioning, you, you told about your uh, Hapkido instructor. Yeah, my Hapkido instructor um, was a very high-ranking black belt in a lot of those other martial arts that I mentioned. So he was like a fifth degree in Aikido and a, uh, I don't remember exactly all of them, but he was like a sixth in Judo and uh, eighth degree in in his hapkido or ninth degree in his hapkido and then he was like a a fifth or sixth degree in, in japanese jujitsu and so all these all these other ones that he was in he was really high rank also so um, that's where a lot of my uh, hapkido uh, style or teachings was influenced by all of that other stuff so so it's a nice mix of aikido japanese jujitsu judo and then the hapkido of course was all part of my hapkido experience so um, and then uh, MMA, I've been doing MMA I think since like 2012, mm -hmm. 11. Yeah. Um, and then boxing, uh, just Western boxing um, mm -hmm. for a few years. And I, we did that in the MMA. There was, a, there was a specific boxing class within my MMA program. But then we brought on a new uh, MMA, or uh, sorry, we brought on a new boxing coach yeah. who strictly does USA Boxing, mm -hmm. and then I got involved with him, and I'm I'm the, the assistant coach for him mm -hmm. now, and I'm uh, registered with USA Boxing as a coach. Yeah. So, um, I did a little bit of like self-taught Jeet Kune Do also okay. when I was younger, like in my teenage years, I would read the Bruce Lee books and yeah. stuff, and try to do my own little thing with Jeet Kune Do. I actually built my own wooden dummy. I took a, a log. Kind of yeah, we, we, yeah, we had a wood. We had a wood. Sorry, a wood burning fireplace, mm -hmm. and so we had a bunch of firewood and logs mm -hmm. and stuff that we would chop up and, and work with. So I had a big log, mm -hmm. and I drilled a bunch of you know the holes for the arms, and yeah. and I used um, axe handles for the arms. I went to a uh -huh. hardware store and put axe handles right. in there, and those were the arms. And I did my own little uh, Wing Chun practice for a little while. But yeah. that's pretty much my mm -hmm. experience, I, mm -hmm. I think, for the most part. Yeah. And a notice, notable thing as well, you've been running your gym for since... Since 2001, I think, is when we like officially started our own gym. 17 years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. nice. And you were teaching before that as well? Or was yeah, that so, so I, before the whole story on how my gym got started, right. um, the instructor had an affair with, mm -hmm. with uh, one of the adult, yeah. the moms or whatever, the oh. adults. And so that kind of created a falling apart with the school, and then one thing left to another, and then we we basically branched off and we bought him out and started the school over. Yeah. But we started, we built the school on my home property. Mm -hmm. So my school is literally this building in my backyard <laughs> behind my house. Is it still there? Yeah. So your gym is in your backyard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're not living there anymore, yeah. but that's so awesome. Yeah. It's like a dream. It's like everybody's dream. I think like all like all martial artists they dream about this kind of farm next to your door dojo, and you have it. Yeah, and maybe uh, maybe 
for this video, I can send you some pictures or something. Sure. Like you can yeah. pop them up during the middle of this podcast, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you can awesome. see what it looks like and everything. So, uh, um, so I'll send so you some, awesome. some pictures. Yeah, yeah, it's a really cool gym. Um, we actually, so I was doing MMA, like I said, at another gym that was literally like uh, one mile down the road from uh -huh. us. So we had our Taekwondo school, but it was it was Taekwondo mixed with a little bit of my influence with other right. stuff too. So we did a little bit of grappling mm -hmm. throws. Um, we did some kick, kickboxing kind of stuff. It wasn't mm -hmm. just Taekwondo. Yeah. Um, so we did more than just Taekwondo. It was, it was uh, a little more modernized, I guess you would say. Um, but the MMA gym, uh, they got sick and tired of their landlords. There mm -hmm. was a whole bunch of roof leaks and stuff. It was yeah. damaging the equipment. And um, they said, uh, the owner asked me, can you we basically move into your gym? Mm -hmm. And so we took a long time to figure out the schedule, try and you know, work all the different class hours in and we made it work. So, so my MMA gym moved into my gym. So now it's a combined right. MMA and Taekwondo and boxing and, and other, right. you know, whatever stuff that we do there, so. And probably last thing here, but which I found fascinating too, you built like the whole building, right? Yeah, yeah, we built, we built it ourselves. Yeah, my dad, my brother. Uh, Again? A couple, like... Yeah, we ordered, it's a, it's a pole barn basically, okay. but it's all finished, it, it, um, you wouldn't, it's it's a. I saw you f your videos there. It was yeah, there? yeah. And it's like it, lo it looks awesome. Yeah, it looks like a normal building on the inside. Mm -hmm. It's all finished. It's got yeah. you know dressing rooms and bathroom and you know. Crazy. I I had to kind of remodel the gym once mm -hmm. the MMA guys moved in. Okay. Different. Because buildings. they they need a lot more of the equipment. You right. Know, the boxing yeah. the boxers need the the ring right. and yeah. and the Muay Thai bags and sure. you know for for yeah. kickboxing and and. Uh, but then you also need the open floor space for jujitsu and for taekwondo and for doing your forms and all sure. that stuff. So, so I made this rack system for all my bags. So I went from only four bags to twelve bags, mm -hmm. and I have a locking track system mm -hmm. that I that I designed and installed. So now all my bags can be moved out of the way, right, okay, nice. and we got a nice open space. And then all my bags can go in and pin them in place. Sweet. Um, and my boxing ring is is uh, modular too. Right. So usually a boxing ring takes like an hour or two to set up, a, re a real full-size boxing ring. Yeah. And my boxing ring takes like five minutes to set up. You should put a, like, buy a patent for it. <laughs> Start selling the system. Yeah, so I have these um, permanently fixed, like, uh, attachment points uh, in, in the walls, basically, the, the poles in certain parts of my building. And so we just pull out the, uh, the ropes and attach the turnbuckle nice. on the three of the corners, and in the fourth corner, I use a big ratchet strap, and it just sucks <laughs> right. sucks the corner tight, and it's uh, it's just as tight as a regular boxing ring would be. Nice. And by the time the guys are done putting on their hand wraps and putting tie, tying <laughs> the, their boxing the shoes, I got the ring set up for them, nice. and they're ready to go. Sweet. So it's a it's a pretty cool setup. Huge for dojo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just if people are super excited, they want to come by. So it's in Oregon? Yeah, Hubbard, Oregon. Okay. And it's called Counterpoint Martial Arts. Okay. And then the MMA gym that moved in with us is Animals MMA. Okay. And the coach, the head coach is Enoch Wilson. Okay. He's been in the game forever. He's like 60 something fights. I don't know, he has a <laughs> bunch of fights. Uh, wow. um, we, the, we, um, we have an, uh, a win ratio above 90%. What? With our, our our competitors, I should visit you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, 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 are there pro guys there? Uh, yeah, there's some pros. And me? Yeah. Sweet. You have, not UFC, I guess. No, UFC. We have a Bellator fighter. Okay. Yeah. So we have we have a, a one that's contracted with Bellator. Um, Damn. But, and they've done a lot of the other local, you know, FCFF, uh, Arena Wars, uh, King of the Cage. Nice. Um, there's a lot of a lot of different uh, organizations that we fought through. I'll keep that in yeah. mind. 90% winning ratio, yeah. it's like above 90, that's yeah. like kick ass, mm -hmm. sweet. Well, awesome, okay, so that wraps up the, the, the intro. To, to continue on, kind of how we met uh, is through, through the questioning of martial arts. Oh yeah, so you had your Aikido versus MMA mm -hmm. uh, video yeah. where, where yeah. you, where you, you uh, had your session where you fought that MMA guy. Yeah. Um, and what the crazy thing is, I've always known that Aikido has always gotten kind of a bad rap anyway. Sure. And I was planning on doing a little mini series on my channel anyway that was kind of going to show some things right. that do, you know, 
uh, work in certain situations, sure. you know, or can be yeah. effective, or yeah, yeah. or you can mix it a little bit because yeah. because my Hakido experience uh, has mm-hmm. some Aikido experience mm-hmm. in with it, and a lot of it's the same. You know, you're doing small joint locks, you're doing yeah. you're doing iriminagi, you're doing all sure. these these throws and takedowns that are that are identical. Sure. But one of them's Korean, one of them's Japanese. It's the same yeah, stuff. It's the same lineage. Yeah. So. I was sort of planning on doing that already, and I and I said this in in one of my videos. I was like, I was already planning on doing this, but then I saw you, and I yeah. said, I guess I'll go ahead and try to throw yeah. some videos out there real quick sure. that yeah. that cover this issue. Yeah. And so um, I, I I reached out to you mm-hmm. to say I have some suggestions that might work for you, yeah. um, and then I, I did a couple of my videos, and then we connected on Skype yeah, that yeah, one yeah. time, and I yeah, I, yeah. I tried to teach you some. Uh, transitions from the arm drag right because yeah, yeah. Arm, arm drag is very good at, at cutting you know mm-hmm. taking an angle yeah. and then you have a lot of entry points there for, right. for all sorts of stuff when you do an arm right. drag on somebody yeah. Yeah. so it, it it all kind of blends together right. you know yeah once you know that those tools are available right. so yeah I think I was probably still like just so brand new at things I, that was I love the arm drag up to this day yeah. but yeah, probably I was like not good enough to, to really get it. Yeah, I, I think I had to. We, it was hard too, like because I had to do it at like three in the morning or something like yeah, that, and I was super tired. Like and I'm, I'm trying to like talk to you and and. Uh, right. <laughs> we should do it live next <laughs> yeah. time when we have a chance. Like, re- fix it up. Yeah. Uh, but like the whole thing of questioning, though, that's very much a part of you too. I would imagine, like especially talking. Taekwondo is is that because well we talked a bit a bit about this in the car and just like one reasons why I was excited to record our conversation is because I never did Taekwondo I just uh, but but when I question Aikido publicly uh, I keep stumbling into a number of martial arts which have you could say like I would say there's like the middle and let's say there's combat sports on one side, and and uh, I, I I like to call them traditional martial arts. That's mm-hmm. not the perfect term, but it does the job. But like, some of them are more functional. Yeah. Some of them fall in like Aikido's on the very edge of mm-hmm. what people call bullshito. Yeah. It's like doesn't work. Uh, Taekwondo, like so there's like there's Wing Chun. It's having a hard time. Like I won't say that that I have a strict opinion about it. Sistema yeah. has a very questionable pers- a lot of people question, it, especially people from the other side. Mm-hmm. And Taekwondo, I think it's kind of closer to that middle, yeah. especially since I think some some fighters are implementing those kicks. Right. But it's still on that side, and especially I hear bad things about American Taekwondo, yeah. like that it's very much about making money, very McDojo. Yeah. So I'm very curious, like from the, I never got the inside perspective. How is it really? So yeah, there are a lot of these like franchise Taekwondo schools that it's almost like glorified daycare for the kids. And on one side, is a, is a five-year-old kid really gonna get mugged? Does a five-year-old <laughs> kid really need to kick know ass. how to kick somebody's yeah. ass? Yeah. Probably not. But there is a cutoff point where you do need to start, you know, giving them some 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 truth pills. You know, start feeding them some truth pills, some doses of give them some doses of reality, yeah. get them to evolve and take you know grow into a, a real martial art. Uh, you know, and, and Taekwondo, a lot of times is just left at this training wheels martial mm-hmm. art phase, right. and and that's kind of the the problem that I see. Where yeah, and it is about the money. It's about just glorified daycare. Um, you just keep paying your fees and get your belt, and you keep paying more fees and get those, your next belt. Are those very expensive? I, I have a feeling that um, I are expensive. Don't know. Okay. I've, I was then, never in one of those crappy okay. schools. Got it. Yeah. We we had to work our ass. Right. They're, 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 we've failed people. People fail in our school. Okay. That's we've good. failed. That's we've failed people many times. Okay. Even though, you know, they uh, be, before somebody ke- gets to test in my school. Yeah. They have a, a, a petition form, mm-hmm. and they have to have a, an instructor check off everything to make sure, okay, you're ready for your test. Okay. So basically, you should go into this test and, and not have any problems. Right. But sometimes nerves and, yeah. and yeah. something, I don't know, something happens and they still, right. they, they choke. Right. And so, sorry, you know, try next time, you know. <laughs> but 
um, <clears throat> yeah, the the McDojos or some some people call it uh, instead of Taekwondo, take one's dough. Like, you're, just, you're just taking their money. <laughs> I never heard that. That's funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, a lot of it. It's all about like birthday parties um, right. and all it's this this, this stuff. It's yeah, a bit shady though. Yeah, I went. Uh, yeah. I actually went to the martial arts super show in Las Vegas, which is this big uh, martial arts business related kind of convention. I think it's, I heard about it, but yeah. Yeah, huh? it's all about like the business side right, right. of martial arts, mm -hmm. and. It's so much of it was just birthday parties, birthday parties, birthday parties. And it's like, give them a sword and they'll cut the cake with the sword. And, <laughs> and that's like, that's all it was. Um, there, I did learn some cool things there that, that I did come back home with. But yeah, it, there's definitely a, uh, a, a different approach to a lot of these Taekwondo schools. And I, we are more about, you know, making sure these kids are safe. Um, making sure they can get out of a situation if they get into one. They're probably not going to go and be an MMA fighter. You know, at least the, the kids in the Taekwondo program are probably not going to be MMA fighters. Yeah. If they want that, they can go to do. Yeah, they can go to. They MMA. can do my MMA program or my yeah. boxing program that I got, yeah. or whatever. Um, but it's it's uh, definitely a notch above, you know, the 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 bad Taekwondo that's out there. Um, you know. So your school was kind of legit in that sense. It wasn't McDojo for sure. No. We to learn yeah, more. yeah. And we we were we would do a lot of like actual contact sparring. Okay. And and a lot of times we weren't wearing anything like mm -hmm. bare right. bare feet, bare knuckle. Mm -hmm. You know, hitting each other, uh, making yeah. some contact. Yeah. Um, uh, and definitely you can't do that now, of course, mm -hmm. um, for liability, a lot of liability reasons, but. Um, so what I'm trying to do now is I've been trying to get my Freestyle Taekwondo Federation mm -hmm. going, which is basically you, you have two main organizations um, that are kind of the most popular for Taekwondo. That's the International Taekwondo Federation, the ITF, and the World Taekwondo Federation, the WTF. Mm -hmm. And both of those systems have taken Taekwondo and kind of, I don't know, lack of a better, I guess they watered it down, they politicized it. Um, is this just states or is it also Korean? It's in yeah Korea. Korea, Korea it's from, they're all, they're both based in well the, I think the ITF is based in Canada now, okay. but yeah both of them came from Korea. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to kind of create my own thing called the Freestyle Taekwondo Federation, it, and it's freestyle because it's more of an open style. You are punching to the face. You it's right. basically Korean Korean kickboxing. Okay. You know. Right. So. And what the, the sad thing is Taekwondo, way back in the day, it used to have knees. Okay. There, you could do punches to the face. You could do all this. Basically, you have the same tools as like Muay Thai. And, and actually, you have more because Muay Thai doesn't have like the crescent kicks. Um, it doesn't really do the side kick. It doesn't do a lot of the spin, you know, back kick or right. whatever. Yeah. Um, so, Taekwondo, in my opinion, Taekwondo is has the potential to be even more effective than Muay Thai. You got way more tools at your disposal. Sure. It's like, I'll just jump in here, but so I'm in contact with a few kind of YouTubers, martial artists uh, recently, which is kind of became friends and do some podcasts together. And one of them is Taekwondo based. And I looked at him spar, like do like an actual sparring with- What's with his name? He's Argentinian. Liquid Katamas? Yes, he yeah, is. I know, him. I know him, yep. He's, he's sweet, he's, yeah. I like him, I like him a lot. Yeah. So he actually started that podcast. Uh -huh. So I got to know him just recently, but I, but he sent uh, to the group, four of us, he sent his sparring footage. And uh, he's like sparring, I guess, with like kind of MMA kickboxers. Mm -hmm. And he does those fancy Taekwondo kicks practically. Yeah. And they're sweet. Like yeah. like people don't know how to defend from them. Yeah. There's this tricky, tricky kind of mm -hmm. low kick to high kick. Yeah. And I also saw this guy, my brother, Hopefully he's not listening to this, but he's like, like, he doesn't know much about fighting, but he's like, he saw a video, he's like, oh, you should learn to kick like that. And he sent me a video of a Taekwondo kickboxer, maybe you know him too, but he does, Andy, Andy who? probably, yeah. and he's just like doing these badass Taekwondo kicks and kickboxing and they like work. Mm -hmm. 
I can see the potential. I don't him. know a whole lot about Andy. I just, I've known that he was famous for a lot of his kicks. He would have right. a really big, nice axe kick. Yeah. I think, and then, yeah, but he was also like that. a kickboxer too. Right. And, and uh, right. I know he was, right. he was more well known for, right. for, for that right. type of thing. So that's definitely, because what I heard again, so was, I'm just wanting to, I always, I never want to be, I never want to be like third source yeah. where I hear someone, sim, someone saying, this is like, well, you're, you're definitely the closest I got to a source. <laughs> so I just wanted to check some things with you. Uh, so I think what I heard is that pre-UFC or early UFC stages, they, they wrote off a lot of martial arts. Yeah. And I think Taekwondo was written off. Like also, like, is it Machida who's bringing back karate into it? Yeah, yep, yeah. And, and I think like, so that's kind of starting to see, oh, actually it can work. And I think... Yeah. I heard Taekwondo went through this too. Yeah. People are like, oh, spinning kicks, they don't work. And now yeah. it's, it's a thing. So what do you think about that? Oh, definitely. There's, there's people who um... either, you know, usually a lot of people have Taekwondo or karate as their first martial art. A lot of parents just, it's sort of this natural thing. It, a, a kid right. wants to do a martial art, you're going to go stick them in their little karate cast or, or, yeah, or Taekwondo. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of them grow up with that. And then when they, like I said, you got the training wheels phase. Right. And then when you want to graduate to something else, Taekwondo doesn't really have an answer for that. Mm -hmm. And that's what my, I'm trying to do with my FTF. That yes. Now you have an answer for that. If you want right. to keep doing Taekwondo, but take it to the next level. Um, but otherwise you got to do MMA or, yeah. or Muay Thai or go into boxing or something like that. And then, so these guys that have some sort of traditional background and yeah. then they transition to MMA, they're able to put this stuff together and, and show that, yeah, it, it can work. You know, a, a, a kick is a kick and a punch is a punch. You, you just got to figure out how to make it land, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever. Yeah. It, I don't think it really matters about the style or, right. or, or whatever. So kind of the transition you know, has to be made, but it's not a dramatic transition. Not really. You, you, and it takes time to figure this out. I know I, we, I mentioned that Bruce Lee quote earlier when, when yeah. Bruce Lee first Mm -hmm. started doing martial arts he didn't understand anything he thought a punch was just a punch and a kick was just a kick and then while he was learning it going through everything he realized oh a punch isn't just a punch and a kick right. isn't just a kick but then once he mastered it a punch is just a punch a kick is yeah. just a kick you know once right. you can put it together just naturally yeah. that's that's a key and it takes a lot of it just takes more experience time on time on the mat and time in the ring for sure it's I'm not there yet you know I'm just a beginner but something I can I can guess and recognize I think and we spoke about that briefly too today, that until you start to feel, let's say, inspiring, mm -hmm. even, like until you start to feel comfortable, like even if in the beginning I flinch a lot yeah. and I'm just turning away. And then for me, like the punch is like, it takes effort. Like, okay, I need to do this yeah. kick. Ugh, there's my kick. Yeah. I need to punch across. Uh, okay. But then when I start to feel comfortable in it, as you said, it's like a punch becomes a punch. It's just like there's not much, there, the technique is there. So I guess it's a little bit like yeah, that. Yeah. And there's a lot of repetition you got to have too. Right. I mean, if you, if you've thrown 10,000 sidekicks, yeah. you're probably going to throw one pretty easily yeah. no matter what martial art you've done. Yeah. You know, there's been times where I'm, I'm supposed to only do boxing, but I was, I, oh crap, I, I'm not supposed to be doing a kick. You know, yeah. so there's a lot of these instinctual things too that can take over. Right. And once you're in that state, I mean, you could really make some good stuff work. Nice. When you know, when you, when you see this opening, right. even though it's MMA, but yeah. you, you crap, I can do this spin heel kick or whatever right yeah. now and, right. and it's, it's just there. boom and it happens right. that's you know somebody that doesn't have that prior experience is right. probably not going to let the click for, for that, sure you know and i'm kind of just interesting to, to point out that i'm kind of expecting sooner or later for that to happen at least to some degree with my IQ. that's what i think too yeah, yeah right. there's, there's <laughs> this there's this there's there's definitely room mm -hmm. for aikido to fit in somewhere right. in mma right. i don't and, and it doesn't have to be some fancy, crazy, like Steven Seagal, Kotagaishi right. flipping the guy right. through the yeah, air. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. it might just be a quick grabbing the wrist, right. and then it, it just gives a quick little off balance, and then that opens up for a leg takedown or something yeah, yeah, yeah. like that. that right. I mean, if, if that works, you made your Aikido work. Sure. And there's definitely places where you can fit it in. Well, you know, <laughs> so it's just it's just there aren't people I think crossing over, and I think a lot of it has to do with the the, the philosophical part of Aikido. Not For a lot sure. of Aikido guys want to want to transition over to getting punched in the face. Right. right. I think there's. For sure, that's true. I mean, being an insider, I'd say I go enough far enough to say the philosophical is there, 
and even like under that, like kind of a deeper current, undercurrent is there's a bit of that ego too, okay. kind of like Aikido is just so. I don't want to make this this talk too much about Aikido, but but it's an interesting thing to point out is that Aikido is so much. It's so. Uh, what's the word? English word. Sanitary is that a word? Like so Sanitary. clean, like oh, hospital. Sanit yeah, hospital Sanitary. clean. Oh yeah, yeah. It's I like, can see what you mean. I would use that word in, in yeah. my native tongue, but uh -huh. it's kind of like. It's so clean and hygienic, and, uh -huh. and you get used to that. And I know this myself. Yeah. It's like you get used to this nice, straight posture mm -hmm. and all these and fights beautiful aren't like movements. That. Yeah. Exactly. And then when you get when that messy thing hits you, it just bothers you, it just yeah. like disturbs you. Uh -huh. And I think partly consciously and subconsciously, probably a lot of Aikido people they just mm -hmm. they just can't do it. It's mm -hmm. just like they they've been too much in that nice. <clears throat> nice, nice. Or, or it's like some dark Aikido styles, like I'll be blunt and say like Ivana style is famous for being sadistic, mm. kind of just like punishing your partner. I'm not but familiar then, with that. Yeah, it's just very dominant. Huh. It's like very alpha male. Mm. It's like I do a technique on you and just like harmonize you with the ground <laughs> and then it's like the kind of an internal, yeah, internal there's, joke. That's funny. There's your harmony. You're, yeah, yeah, you're right. in harmony with the ground. Right, I'm going to harmonize that's you funny. with the tatami. And then, and then you switch, and then the other person harmonizes you. Wow! And then it's really like sadistic, especially like the old school way, which mm. is still out there. And uh, and it's so much about dominance. And huh. and when you get, you can, you know, you kind of get into this submissive dominant relationship. And eventually, <laughs> when you dominate, you get used to dominating often. Mm -hmm. Especially like if you're higher rank, then you just resist techniques. You don't mm -hmm. let other people do techniques, and then you're dominating all the time. And when you step into the ring, probably you'll get dominated <clears throat> bad until uh -huh. you learn the basics. So I think, and they just, well, it's sorry, it's a, you know, it's a yeah. whole deep subject and don't want to go there too much, but just what wanted I, to expand on yeah. What I think, what I've noticed is that almost every single UFC or Bellator or, or something, you know, you, you see these highlights and you'll see some crazy move. There, every day there's new crazy things happening in MMA. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't yeah. remember the fight, but just just like a month or so ago, some guy did a crazy like ac he did this accidental. It looked like it was accidental, but he like bent down and did like this elbow that, that elbow went cut. up <laughs> and like behind him, and it and, and it knocked the guy out. Right. Yeah. And it's like if you can do that, right, like crazy out of the blue move, you can probably fit some Aikido in there somewhere. Sure. For sure. There was this yeah. one video where, uh, and a lot of people, you know, people like they want to prove me wrong. Mm -hmm. Or they're just excited, oh, I see, Aikido works. And a lot of people send me this video where this guy had this arm lock, kind uh -huh. of looked like an Aikido one. It's It was like a kickboxing or MMA match. I'm not sure what it was. It looked a bit uh, awkward. But then eventually he just, like, the other guy didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And the elbow just snapped. It just, like, mm -hmm. went the other way. And, and people were like, oh, you see, Aikido works. Uh -huh. I have no clue if that's really Aikido, if the yeah. guy was trying to apply Aikido. And it was, like, bad ending. That mm -hmm. wasn't a nice ending. but. I, it, it was weird, for mm -hmm. sure. It was so weird that the other guy didn't know what to do that he broke his elbow. Wow. So, but maybe, you know, maybe, maybe mm -hmm. that's maybe that is something that, I, not that I would be aiming for that, but maybe that's one of those Aikido like, things which could click mm -hmm. in. So, it's an interesting subject. Mm -hmm. I can definitely say, like my Hapkido, um, my Hapkido experience, which, like I said, has a lot of Aikido influence in it, yeah. totally helped with my footwork. Yeah. I've okay. I've gotten so many compliments from instructors mm. and, and opponents right. that are, that have sparred me, and and like boxing, you know, okay. boxing is 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 probably the the best footwork, yeah. you know, you can get, and so uh, my hapkido experience has definitely helped that. Oh. It, I'm way lighter on my toes. I'm, mm. I'm way, you know, com comfortable angles. cutting angles. And, and Aikido is fantastic for that. Aikido is fantastic sure. for feeling the distance and, and reading the balance of your opponent. Mm -hmm. You know, even in a striking situation, if that boxer, if I'm boxing and that fist is coming at me, it's very easy for me to pick up whether it's, it's going to be this far from me or, or this far from me. Yeah. And I can gauge, you know, how much or how little to move. And I can definitely attribute my abilities to that you know, experience that I've had for my Hapkido. Yeah, very much so. It's, it's interesting you brought it up. I didn't think about it. It's like, that's my 
dark side, I guess, mm -hmm. because I'm so, so, I get so many negative comments online that it's just yeah. difficult, I mean, for my killer people, that they hate me. Mm -hmm. And then it's hard for me to keep a, a positive relationship with it. And, so, and sometimes I just, recently I just didn't think about it. But but now that you bring it up, um, so even like when I, looking back at Aikido versus MMA video, some people who were kind enough to look for good things in what I did, mm -hmm. they were like, actually your footwork wasn't that bad. And just uh -huh. recently I took a short look uh -huh. at it, and I was like, actually, yeah, it wasn't like, I went, didn't cross my legs too much. Uh -huh. So maybe that's their cutting angles. That's what I'm learning right now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think, I didn't like capitalize on it. I didn't really dig into it too much, but I, I, I noticed like I can do that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, now when you said it, I'm like, if I if I remember my keto training mm -hmm. and like my boxing coach, uh, he's high level boxing coach. And that was one thing, one of the things he taught me. Like, mm -hmm. like if somebody is punching your, their way into you, just, you know, you cut an angle mm -hmm. and it's, it's not easy to do. But now that you said, that's totally a keto. Yeah. Have you, have you done? Yeah. And that's why I say like it, martial arts are, pretty much the same mm -hmm. you're just sure. yeah. giving them Body's a different name yeah the, yeah the human body does the same yeah it's like well, our elbows it either does do this way. or it doesn't do that and you try to make yeah. it do things that it's not supposed to do but sure. have you ever done like 10 con drills where you the they'll grab and you and you lead and you turn and then you lead them out what, what, what side so is if that? you if you grab if you same side grab okay. and then I, I step here yeah. and I turn and, and and I lead you away from me so you turn it's kind of like, is that Aikido? Pure yeah. Aikido? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. You've done yeah, stuff yeah, like that. For sure. Yeah. And you can, do you see that in boxing all the time? Oh. If you watch, if you watch the Foreman Frazier fight, um, you'll yeah. see Foreman throwing around Joe Frazier like that. He's oh. he's he'll 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 evade uh, Frazier's attack, step in and do like a 180 degree turn and and be basically flanking him at that point and attacking. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, I'll send you the link yeah. to it. But yeah, like, like Aikido. Aikido footwork is very similar to boxing footwork. Mm. You're you're slipping and blending with these punches. Sure. You're blending with these attacks, and you're creating angles. And you're trying to you're trying to flank your opponent basically. Mm -hmm. And that stuff just it works so well together. Nice. Finally, you're giving me hope. Yeah. <laughs> because I was always like, How, what can I salvage? And uh -huh. I thought about wrist locks. I'm not there yet, but like ground mm -hmm. game, wrist locks, maybe some takedowns. Oh, and remember, I was talking about the um, Which one? Yeah. Irimanagi yeah. entry. Instead of instead of trying to do this high high right. block, if you, you do, do more of a, of a boxer's roll, right? And boxer's okay. roll and come up right. and then and then take that right. Take their balance. There's potential. I think. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I, sh I, I should start playing. Maybe like at least two more months. <laughs> get the basics down. <laughs> yeah. I'm still just like in my sparring mainly. I'm just like. Uh huh. Because that's something I used to do. Um, <clears throat> Somebody would throw like a straight right at me, yeah. and I would roll, and I would come up. I would come up and plant myself in their armpit, and basically, like, offset their balance. Yeah. Except I would go this way. Yeah. Instead, the Iruminagi wants to take it this way. Yeah. So I would come up, offset their balance, yeah. and then boom, boom, right. or or whatever from there, or mm -hmm. or boom, and then leg kick or something like that. Okay. So. Sweet. Yeah, I think I think you'll you'll find. Areas Start, to, I'm starting at least to get an idea where to search for. Uh -huh. <laughs> because I said I just wrote it off. I threw the. I have to admit, I threw the baby with the bathwater. Mm. You know, I did that, and uh, I thought about wrist locks. It's like, but I guess that's it. Like I love a kimmy. Mm -hmm. I think it's a beautiful. Oh yeah. Thing. Yeah, rolls then, and falls are important. Right. Yeah. It's just like even in like daily life, but uh -huh. it's just coordination and everything. I, I I love that part. I think it's unique to Aikido. Mm -hmm. But everything else was like. But the footwork, angles, yeah, that could, mm -hmm. be, that could be. Yeah. To, to bring myself back to the questions, um, so I just wanted to ask you a little bit more about Taekwondo, your mm -hmm. own experience, and something you mentioned in the car, and uh, you slightly thought of, talked about it, but didn't go deep into it. And But let me know if this is like off record. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but like the... <coughs> Have the blind spot of taekwondo or the limitations of traditional taekwondo mm. where you're like you mentioned like throwing out garbage yeah if you're open to talk about that on record yeah. because it's a touchy subject for me yeah. i'm not sure but what would you say are those things the biggest thing is throwing out these people that tell you what you can or cannot do 
okay. with your Taekwondo. Right. <laughs> That's the biggest yeah, right, thing right, right there. Yeah. Because you have, the you, yeah, like you have the, the WTF and the ITF, mm -hmm. and they say, you, you have to do this this way, and you have to do this way, and, and if you don't, it's not Taekwondo. Well, back in the 60s, they used to punch in the face. They used, they used to punch like this. They used to do knees, and if you go through um, General Che, who is kind of the founder of Modern some of the school. beginning Taekwondo phases, um, he would produce these manuals, these books, mm -hmm. and with tons of pictures and things. He had, mm -hmm. he had elbows, he had headbutts, he had uh, knees, he had uh, leg kicks, and people are like, well, you don't leg kick in Taekwondo. Well, you, it, they used to. Right. You know, everything okay. was in there. He, he would do weird things that even I kind of don't really care for, like these finger pokes and these, these weird things, but right. um, he did everything. But that was not, there was no limitation there. Yeah, it was a very much an open uh, style, right. you know, it, it was just whatever you need to do to, to, right. to kill your attacker, <laughs> literally. <laughs> he was very militant with it. He was, and, he was a general. Right? Yeah, yeah, and they, they would use Taekwondo in Vietnam. That's one wow. of the biggest places where it kind of got, uh, blew up? yeah, kind of blew up in Vietnam. Yeah. And then all these American soldiers brought it uh, back like, to America. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's where it really took place was in Vietnam, where they were literally yeah. using it to, to, to fight wow. to the death. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, because I know something somewhat similar happened with Aikido, I don't know why, more or less, but why do you think it, this happened with Taekwondo? Well, <clears throat> I mean, this, this I know why, again. I know why. There's a book called A Killing Art by Alex Gillis, I think is, I think is how you say his name. Okay. If, you, if you want to know everything about Taekwondo, that's the book. Okay. Yeah, A Killing Art. Uh -huh. And... Is he like a Vietnamese veteran? Uh, yeah. uh, he's, he's, Vietnam, I think he's Vietnam. a Canadian guy. Okay. Um, he's a white guy. Um, I think he's Canadian, I don't remember, but um, he goes through all the history of Taekwondo mm -hmm. and, and these issues where um, basically Korea did not have a very good public image around the time when General Che was trying to make it popular. Mm -hmm. And they basically took it and turned it into this, this beautiful cultural thing. They wanted, right, to, they wanted to make it, sell it. Yeah, they wanted to make it pretty, and they wanted Seems to like make. They wanted to say, "This is Korea. We're pretty. We have a good culture. We have this beautiful mm. art." And they, they, that's what they did with it. They used yeah. it almost like a stylized, it. like a, a something to see. Come visit Korea. We're, <laughs> we're, we're, we have Taekwondo. we have deep, rich, beautiful culture. We have Taekwondo, yeah, yeah. and that's kind of what they did with Kitchy it. And yeah, <laughs> and so they, they didn't want it to be this, this brutal martial art. They wanted it to be. Uh, more more family friendly, I guess is what you would call it. Yeah, makes sense. It makes yeah. total sense. And that's what it happened. Yeah. That's what it turned into. Uh-huh. And and then they had uh, the Olympic they're the ones that kinda of turned it into the Olympic style. Which so, brought these things into your right? Yeah, so there's there's no punches to the face. You can punch yeah. to the body, but even if you land, the judges don't give it to you. I've seen some of the most beautiful body punches and the, the judges have their little clickers for the scores. Uh -huh. And they won't, they won't count it. What do you get points for? Kicks? It just kicks only. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And Shoot. there's this different break, breakdown of, of how much and like you get, you get extra points for if it's a, it's a jumping kick and it, extra points if it's a head kind kick. Of more beautiful, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. So it's to, it's to make it more of a game, make sure. it more challenging. Yeah, like if, more if you do the jumping, watchable. if you do the jumping, spinning, you know, flippity, yeah. flippity flop kick, like you land it and you get a million hard. points or whatever, yeah. you know, and but and that's fine if you want to do that but i've always said taekwondo has an identity problem mm -hmm. you can go to 10 different taekwondo schools and they'll be different and all they say is taekwondo but let's yeah. say you want to do wrestling well if i want to do wrestling what kind of wrestling do i want to do sure do i want to choose. do sumo wrestling yeah do i want to do catch wrestling yeah do i want to do just Greco just folk Roman. wrestling yeah. you know greco-roman wrestling yeah. There, I, I can go to a specific type of wrestling and yeah. I know what I'm getting into. Taekwondo is not like that. And, and karate is kind of a little better. Karate has their different names, different styles. You've got, you know, yeah, yeah, you got your, your different Shotokan, your Ishin Ryu, you've got right. all these different names right. that kind of go with karate. I mean, and you yeah. know kind of what you're getting into. Yeah. Taekwondo is, it's a, it's, it's one you have no idea. Thing. And I think, <laughs> it kind of sounds mean, but I think these, 
Taekwondo schools that just do the Olympic stuff, they need to say sport Olympic Taekwondo sport or Taekwondo. Olympic Taekwondo. For sure. Yeah. That's have that in their name somewhere yeah. or something. Right. But and then my mine is the freestyle taekwondo. Right. That's and why that I'm trying to, to do say what it is. Right. I'm trying to differentiate it. Yeah. I thought so, about when I was still about saving Aikido, uh -huh. I thought about suggesting to people and I did actually I said I suggested online, I just never pushed it far enough. First of all I thought about green, orange, red Aikido. Oh, okay. Kind of green is like <clears throat> green means like like categories. Like green means no martial art, pure stylistic, kind of all about tradition and philosophy. Orange is like in between, and red is like you spar and etc., which barely exists in Aikido, mm -hmm. but still like. So I thought about something like that. I was suggesting it to people, or and I know maybe that's a thing, but but again, Aikido definitely basically my. One of my conclusions that I came to is Aikido should be very clear about we are not about self. And some schools aren't, mm -hmm. but they still don't say that out loud. And they should be like, look, there's, there are different styles, different schools. Yeah. They perform techniques differently, but the training methodology is very similar. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think it would be fair as well to see like, okay, we are philosophical, we are mm -hmm. spiritual Aikido. So I get, I, mm -hmm. I, 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 like, I understand where you're yeah. coming from, 100%. But um, but then in terms of yourself, your own vision, so tell me a bit more about freestyle mm -hmm. technology variation. So, so what stage is it in right now? What's the vision for it? Because people are going to listen to this and let's see the right people hear it. So, uh -huh. so let's, let's talk a little bit about so it. So I had to kind of put some things on hold for a while because um, just so that people know, I, I don't live in Oregon anymore yeah. where my gym is. Right. So I'm, I'm still, my name's still on it. I still own the property. I still own the gym, whatever, but I, I moved to Arizona. Uh -huh. So now I'm in Arizona. Arizona um, people yeah. get it. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of put things on hold for a while. Um, my goal eventually is to, I want, I would like, I would really like to do some tournaments. I want to see Taekwondo go back to right. um, doing some sort of, um, you know, continuous sparring, not the point stuff. Right. Um, I want to see some tournaments where some of these Taekwondo guys, and, and I already have a nice rule, it's like an 86 page rule book that I, I, I drafted. Really? Yep. Wow. Yeah. Is there, would you be able to, would you be willing to make it public? Uh, not yet. Not yet? Okay. <laughs> I can give you a copy though, it's like if you want. Yeah. yeah, it's not, it's not quite ready for public, but. Okay. Um, but it's in, the, in, in development. But yeah, I have a, I have a nice long detailed rule book. Right. Um, um, but I can, you know, if you want to review it or something, I'll, I'll let you check it out. Ah, um, I'm not an of that problem, but, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I got like a rule book. I got my website. Mm -hmm. um, I got um, some. I got my videos. That yeah. were, my videos were kind of like. Um, for, they were also for my students, mm -hmm. but then there were also kind of just some ideas on mm -hmm. introducing Taekwondo people into um, just other other ways to do what they're doing. Right. You know, and a lot of what I'm doing is punching. Yeah. A lot of it's boxing and punching related and footwork, so I, have, I don't have a whole lot of kicking stuff on there. Um, Which, but because it, but it's kind of covered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and I haven't done much with my channel in a long time because I've, I've kind of put things on the back burner while mm -hmm. I brought in that MMA gym. Mm -hmm. So that kept me busy. So I started yeah. teaching uh, boxing and, and that, that took up a lot of my time. And then I had to kind of step things back a little while while I was moving. Mm -hmm. And so I just moved a couple months ago. So now I'm, the, now I'm there and now here we are. Um, but moving forward, um, yeah, I would like to do, I would like to host some tournaments, um, but that, that takes a lot of money because you gotta, you gotta rent a venue, you gotta get insurance, sure, insurance yeah. money alone is expensive. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to do it very professionally, right. um, kind of like USA boxing, USA boxing, you right. pay, uh, you pay a fee per year right. and you get a membership and then mm -hmm. you can go and you do your, your, your competitions. Right. Um, and then you gotta you gotta pay the judges. You gotta pay sure, yeah, the yeah. referees. You gotta pay um, whoever. Any any full contact martial art event that's open to the public um, has to be sanctioned um, by. Um, it's different by state to state. Mm -hmm. In Oregon, the Oregon State Police has mm -hmm. to sanction it basically, <laughs> and they they own the Oregon State Athletic Commission. Mm. 
So I haven't quite figured out who in Arizona I need to go through, right. um, but I know there's, there's going to be somebody mm -hmm. I need to go through. So yeah, any full contact event has to basically be sanctioned by somebody. And so you got to pay those fees. Um, you got to have a medical doctor on site. And, you and, know your stuff by now. Yeah, <laughs> and you, um, if you don't have a medical doctor, you have to have two EMTs with an ambulance on site, and you have to pay them per hour. Mm. So, so there's a lot of prep work. It's a lot much of, bigger than one would think. Yeah, it's, it's not you, just you can't just guys together. You can't just sell you. raffle tickets and say, "Hey, come to my right. show." Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff wow. to work out. Um, so yeah, I'd like to do events like that. One thing I thought about doing. I've been to Taekwondo tournaments, mm -hmm. the Olympic, I've been to like Olympic style Taekwondo yeah. tournaments, where off in the corner, there'll be jujitsu going on. So you'll have people sparring over here, you'll yes. have people breaking boards over here, you'll have people doing their kata over here, pumse, mm -hmm. well, yeah, in Taekwondo it's called pumse, mm -hmm. over here. And then over here, there's jujitsu. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I thought about, well, what if I kind of piggybacked onto, mm -hmm. you know, sure. some, some other tournaments. Right where we have a specialized event right, the going on. Is there even, if it's like ex <laughs> even if it's exhibition mm -hmm. event or something like that, yeah. you know, maybe we can do, maybe that can draw in and nice. at least get a, get a little bit of exposure and get some people to get in and, and do um, some freestyle Taekwondo. Right. So that's one thing I thought about doing. Well, for, I think this, this would deserve a whole nother like, you know, podcast, mm -hmm. but if we're talking about logistics, I'm, I'm not an expert at that, but but what I do see is the more traction, if that's the right mm -hmm. English word, it gets. Like, if there's people mm -hmm. who, are, who want to see that, and yeah. there's like a, a tipping point, a leverage of people mm -hmm. who want that to happen, they, mm -hmm. maybe there's financial, even like, it's just so nice to have, uh, yeah, sometimes I get confused about English, but like, ideological uh, support, like people are really excited about wanting you to, mm -hmm. to, to make that happen and enough people want that, that I think boosts, boosts up the process mm -hmm. and if there's financial support, people want to chip yeah. into it. I think if just the, the word, I'm just thinking think out loud, but if the word spreads mm -hmm. about it, like even through this video and people are like, I, I would imagine a bunch of Taekwondo guys, mm -hmm. they'd love that. Yeah. So yeah, because I know there's there's need someone to, to do it. There's almost no adult Taekwondo people, and they they quit because right. if either they either they quit because they just want to quit or they quit because they have to move on to something sure. else. Yeah, because Taekwondo switch. doesn't provide that next level. Yes. Yeah. And sure, and see and I don't want people to quit. I want Taekwondo sure. to stay alive and well right. and right. and evolve. Right. What's funny is it's not really evolving. It's evolving by going backwards to the way it used to be. Right. So it's it's kind of a I don't know a reverse reverse. There's evolving. a bit of that in Aikido too, so yeah. it's funny. Yeah, I know. What you um, mean. So you know, and I also want to uh, maybe offer FTF black belt mm -hmm. you know, rankings or whatever you yeah. know or whatever. Not just black belt, any any belt or whatever. But yeah. I don't know how. I don't really have that figured out yet. Mm -hmm. um, I could, of course, have my own school and just do FTF things, but I would like, you know, if other people are sick and tired of ITF and WTF and maybe they want to, maybe I can do some video stuff with them and, and, sure. and they can somehow display additional skills above and beyond the regular Taekwondo stuff. We can say, okay, you're, sure. you, you've taken it to the next step. Now you're more of a freestyle yeah. Taekwondo guy and you can get your ranks that way i don't know well it's definitely we live in the best times for that yeah like, world is small yeah. traveling is easiest yeah. as possible we can do as ever online stuff yeah there there are a lot of online uh, i think even the gracies do like online video I, I would be sure like would. skype tests somehow okay. to get your rank I, they'll I would they'll they'll watch so. you roll yeah. and they'll yeah, tell you what doable. you're doing and then they'll send you your belt in the mail or something like that oh, i yeah. think they do something like that i'm not 100 percent sure but sense. i know there's some i know there's stuff like that out there so I might be able to do something like that. Nice. So, so it's big. Yeah. You have this big mindset here. Yeah, I just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm biting off more than I can chew, but I, I really want Taekwondo to grow mm -hmm. and, and, and I, I don't want Taekwondo to just be a training wheels martial art anymore. Yeah, for sure. You know? It's a noble vision. And, yeah. And yeah, Taekwondo is an unfamiliar field. I know it's just stuff from hearsay and just general martial arts knowledge, but but it's like, I didn't hear it. 
I, I, I'm so sure that it's in the, it's like similar like what happened to in my experience with Aikido. Uh-huh. Like it was in the back, what I brought up, it was in the back of people's minds, like uh-huh. many people's minds. I think pretty much, I, I would bet 9% of Aikidoka sooner or later doubted Aikido or still had that doubt in the back of the uh-huh. mind. Some some people felt, felt left outside and I know this for sure and so many people connected me, they felt like if they started cross training, they would be frowned upon in yeah. their dojo. Oh god, my my old original instructor, he wouldn't let you mention any other. Even if I even mentioned the word judo or, or kickboxing, <laughs> he goes, "What are you talking about?" You know, he yeah. if I if I said, uh, you know, this was back in the '90s. This was right when UFC was 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 getting its start, yeah. and and uh, he would talk trash about. You know the this so all this very stuff. much yeah he, he was a huge chuck norris fan and and he would say things like just watch chuck norris movies he's never on the ground it's like what is that a, you, is that an argument yeah <laughs> you you don't if, if you know how to <clears throat> kick and whatever you'll <clears throat> never go to the ground you don't need to learn that yeah it's like oh, I, I wanted uh, when i was wrestling in high school he gave me such a hard time for wrestling in high school and he wrestled himself he was a wrestler back in his day <laughs> He was totally trying to get me to yeah. not wrestle. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's that. Yeah, resonates with what was happening in Aikido. What's interesting though, and I wasn't like it's kind of sometimes things are in the air, and I think that's kind of like that's the kind of global consciousness of everybody has it in the back of the mind, just nobody speaks up. So I was the first ones to kind of really expose it and just start bringing yeah. up that subject up, especially like Aikido versus MA, and then the talks which followed. Mm-hmm. Like, do you know Aikido Flow Channel? Yeah. So those yeah. guys. Mm-hmm. And there's at like the same time and Lenny, uh, Lenny yeah, Rogue yeah. Warriors. yeah. So, so those two channels they appeared like pretty much at the same time, mm-hmm. and we all started pushing that subject. And now it's just like a lot of yeah. people are doing that, mm-hmm. and it's starting to become a norm, like to, to like it's starting to become like an okay uh-huh. question to debate about like your own cross training. Or and you found what did you f- you found some video series or. Yeah. You found like this Aikido video series that like you had to pay for, didn't you? And it had like, it was like a, mo- it wasn't yeah, like a modern I, Aikido thing. I think, thing. yeah, yeah. It's like Bruce Bookman, probably Sensei uh, from Seattle. He He's a jiu-jitsu black belt uh-huh. and a high ranking uh, Aikido black belt. Uh-huh. It's like a modern, well, well-filmed Aikido yeah. course mixed with some boxing. And yeah. Is that it? Yeah. I yeah. Think- it was, that was new for sure. Yeah. I can only guess uh-huh. how much was that influenced by the whole, but it's like it's definitely in the air. Yeah. I think like the fact that it's so much out there, it starts the, to make these projects the, happen. The it's the zeitgeist. Yes, exactly. Of right. Aikido. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah is, for sure. is is seeing the the truth now, and yes. and the, all these videos are exposing yeah. it and right. the, and helping they just it. Can't hide I, it I, I don't mean expose as in just I don't know like a like a negative I would way. Use that but same I, way. I guess I guess you could say expose, but. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, bringing it's up subjects which are kind of under ex- the rug. Exposed makes it feel like it's fraudulent, and I don't think it's fraudulent. It's it's just not aware. Of it. It's not self-aware. Aikido is yeah. not really self-aware of its limitations. Good point. You know? Yes. And, and it's, but that's what I want to say. It's in the back of the minds. I think everybody knows uh-huh. there's that limitation. Yeah. But it was just not addressed. It was uh-huh. not talked about. And I think when when the doorway was opened, so many people <laughs> flooded through it. People were like. Oh, actually, yeah, I always was thinking about that. You know, let's start talking about it. So I think I almost feel like from what I hear, from what you're saying, like Aikido has the same. Yeah. I just think they need that doorway to be open. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I, I definitely see, um, you know, there's this, uh, like I said, the zeitgeist of, of Taekwondo. Yeah. It's always this, you know, six-year-old up to... 15 maybe 16 yeah. and then they quit and they quit because it's you know no longer an adult uh, or they're they're a kid and they're, they're moving yeah. on to being an adult and they need they need something else and 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 I I don't know I, I, I would hope that other Taekwondo schools would feel the same way and want to do the same thing you know you can have your kids program but yeah. then when you're when you when they grow up, they right. can move over and, and start hitting each other in the face, yeah. or, or whatever. You know, yeah. safely, of course. Sure. I'm not promoting senseless activities here, but you know, just like boxing or kickboxing or whatever, sure. they can do more yeah, stuff with the next level. Yeah. 
last two questions for this okay. <laughs> for this podcast. Uh, I was just so excited to hear like some some just like kind of like this A B C like this that that kind of bullet points. If you would name top three, I'll be blunt, garbage things in Taekwondo, so people top. would know what you're talking about. What what would that be? Top three garbage things yeah, in Taekwondo. Yeah, you would throw away like that's um, a general thing. We definitely train in Taekwondo, uh, but you would throw it away. First and foremost, the hands down <laughs> sparring. Ah, with, terrible! With the Olympic stuff. Wow. And that's, I'm, maybe I'm cheating and, and combining two, like the first bad thing with the second bad thing. Tell me. And that's, they don't punch to the face. Sure. So they don't really need to keep their hands up. Yeah, but it's so, But they kick strategy. each other in the face. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. That's so, so I, I don't know. They, yeah, they, they, there, there is, there are uh, physical benefits to having your hands down. When you watch, you, have you seen that clip of Anderson Silva when he's doing all this fancy stuff, and then I he gets and it. then he gets gets clipped and gets knocked out. Okay, I heard about so, it. So, so when you're doing this with your hands down, your hands are acting like a counterbalance. Okay, you can yeah. You you can see how I'm kind of doing more, this? Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. This helps. It actually helps if your hands are right. down. You can you can pick up and and pull the the weight from one side to the right. other, and mm -hmm. that does help. Yeah. And I think the the fancy kicking. With your hands down, it kind of helps. Okay, you can, yeah. you can, you can go. Mm, you can, kind of you can kind of create this, this, like a ballerina does sure. her, yeah. whatever triple axle or the yeah. or the ice, the figure I skater, totally ice skater. It. So, yeah. so when they go, and they they throw their kick, yeah. so this can help, but I don't think it's worth it. You should still have your hands For up. For sure. Yeah. So. I just still got clipped. <laughs> yeah. So it really advanced people. Yeah, you might be able to get away with some. But it's like no. Uh, it's at distance, like, maybe. But that's the thing. This is like Anders Silva, like mm -hmm. Conor McGregor level. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be aiming for that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the hands, hands down, down, the uh, not punching to the face because. It, <laughs> Why the, not? The very worst thing in the world is having your very first experience of getting punched in the face being out there for sure you need to feel what it's like to get punched in for the face sure. in the in the gym uh, because it's such a yeah I know yeah you will like you it doesn't matter how much of a you can do badass, martial arts yeah. for 50 years yeah. oh yeah the first time you get hit in the face out here you're just you're, messes up your brain. you're gonna freak out yep. you're yeah, gonna freeze for sure and then when you're freezing that next punch is gonna come right and then the next one and then yep. Yep. who knows yeah so you can do it safely. Wear your mouthpiece. Wear sure. your gloves. Yeah. If you want to wear headgear, there's there's non-contact yeah. headgear. Yeah. You can everything that you can do, you can do safely. And there's always these people with excuses. Oh, oh, we don't want these kids to, you know, get bloody nose. There's there's anything and everything can be done to mitigate risk. Sure. You know. Yeah. I you know you you want to be careful about long-term brain trauma sure, of course, of course yeah. you know constantly getting hit in the Very head light sparring. but you can you can do controlled sparring you can do technical sparring you can do all sorts of different things sure. to make it uh more practical sure. but not dangerous also sure. at the same time so so yeah so that you know hands down um you know not punching to the face the third thing <clears throat> I would say is probably this is it's hard for me to, to say the, or the way I want to say it the probably the, the forms mm -hmm. I, I do think they have some value mm -hmm. but the value is not taught everybody thinks they're just memorizing patterns okay. it's kind of like it's kind of like in class where you just memorize if you're in history class and you're just memorizing dates, dates oh this, yeah. happened, this happened and this happened and this happened and this happened but why something. why did this happen yeah. and lead to this why did it lead to this why did it lead to this you can't implement it anywhere. they don't really do that with the forms mm -hmm. there's a lot of awesome stuff in the forms that mm -hmm. you can pull out um <clears throat> and forms are great for visualization mm -hmm. um, a lot of people talk trash about forms but if you can visualize something it's it's been proven yeah. That visualization like helps you retain stuff. It helps your body it, yeah. uh, retain yeah. so much. Yeah. And and forms are not taught from that perspective. They're just taught. Okay, one, two, three, four, so and you just it's, you just remember these steps, yeah. and then you get your next belt. Right. Yeah. That's the only purpose. Um, yeah. So and maybe that's. You know, I could also say, one of the things I, I dislike the most is the business model. 
But that's more the business model. That's not really about the art, I guess. If I want to keep it specifically about the art. No, I could totally get you. Yeah, so it's going so back to how we're talking about the, the McDojos yeah, and, yeah, the, and the, sure. the birthday parties and all that stuff. Like that's, it I don't, seems like I don't, it's very much ingrained. I don't like that, but I can't, I can't say that's the art. You know that any anybody can you have can a, and can, anybody yes. can have a business anybody can have a birthday party kung fu gym or a birthday party boxing yeah. gym or a but birthday it's just party. The thing that apparently it's just such taekwondo. Such a yeah, taekwondo. taekwondo thing. Yeah, it is kind of a taekwondo almost, thing. Almost like ingrained in the culture. Yeah, I don't know why. So, know so yeah. Probably, <laughs> so okay. So I guess yeah, the hands down thing, no punches to the face, and then the lack of defined, you know, kata, yeah. pumse forms. Uh, instruction, I guess, you know, you're not, you're not breaking it down and really getting to the root of it. I mean, there's, we do this thing called bunkai. I'm sure you, the, the, the Japanese root bunkai, it's, it's uh, like... Modern, tell me, it's like, it's just so much, it's so the very edge of my so, head. So, so the forms, you do your form, you do your low block, you step yeah. and you do your punch, but it's not really a low block and it's right. not, it might not really be a punch. It might be something else. Right. And we do some really cool okay. stuff in my gym where we'll take this low block and this, this is your low block, but this can also be a gi choke. Maybe I'm choking right. you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe I'm choking yeah. you. Maybe I'm, mm. I don't know. So, so you're doing these, you're really visualizing it and it, and it, yeah. and it just helps you think. It helps you have creative juices right. flowing in your mind for these alternative moves yeah. and interpreting them in different yeah. ways. It's really cool. For sure. Yeah, I can totally see that. It's just like, I have this image in my mind of, but I just can't bring it up fully. But it's like, it, pretty much as you said, if you learn this specific thing and this specific thing and this specific thing, but you don't learn the practical application, mm -hmm. it's just going to be these dead things in your brain. Mm -hmm. But then if somebody just points the right moments, like just pretty much what you did potentially with my Aikido quit work. Mm -hmm. I was like, ah, oh, there's Aikido, Tenkan, uh -huh. and you know, Tenkan, and all these steps, and there's boxing, and then you're like, oh, look at that, and like, suddenly it's like, Phew. like uh -huh. that, I don't know if you saw that meme I was introduced to just recently, where there's the brain, kind of just like, dead brain, oh. and then there's, it starts to light up, and then it starts to become shiny, and then you're kind of enlightened brain, uh -huh. and it says like, oh, you're like starting jiu-jitsu, and you, you did this, uh -huh. and kind of realization, it's a funny meme, and it's all over the place, but it's uh -huh. kind of like that, you're connecting the dots, and suddenly the brain lights up, and you're like, seeing all these possibilities, all these mm -hmm. patterns, you had that already, but <clears throat> turning the, at the right spots, just, yeah, I think it can totally light mm -hmm. it up, so, sounds very, mm -hmm. very good. So the last question to wrap up, because uh, this is an exciting subject, it's an, it's an exciting project. So, so if people are, were able to listen through this probably on an hour and a half, <laughs> but it's a good talk, so it's definitely worth it. If they're still out there, uh, let's say they're interested. Let's say they they want to support you at least mm -hmm. on an ideological level, just like just say you're doing a good job, do do more of that, or maybe they want to get involved. Uh, what's the way? Should they contact you through email? Check your website? Uh, I have my website. It's just all spelled out. Freestyle Taekwondo Federation dot com. Um, <laughs> all the way. Um, there's uh, my YouTube channel, Freestyle Taekwondo Federation, also mm -hmm. all spelled out. <laughs> I'll definitely leave the links below, yeah. but yeah. Okay. It's yeah. I mean, it's also, <clears throat> this is going to be an audio podcast version, so. Oh, okay. So both, both um, yeah. I'm on Twitter. Okay. Um, where are you most active? Uh, probably my website or my um, okay. my YouTube okay. uh, would probably be the best way. Um, sure. I'm not super active on Twitter. I have my Facebook uh, page as well, Freestyle Taekwondo Federation okay. on Facebook. Um, I guess people will. So if they write, if they leave a YouTube comment on your videos, maybe that's my, one. Do my you think my web my website yeah. has a uh, like a contact thing okay. where you could you could shoot me an email. Then you'll definitely yeah, get and message. I'll get it. Um, we'll I, I'll, 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 when I get YouTube messages, it also gives me an email notification, okay. so I'll get notified that way. But okay. yeah, I'm just really hoping that um, that it'll kind of bring back some of the attractiveness to Aikido. Or, I'm sorry. I was like, "Well, <laughs> that's out of thin air." Sorry, we were talking. Sure thing. I don't I'm mind that. Getting a yeah. No, uh, taekwondo, and Aikido. Quite a yeah, bit. taekwondo. The yeah, attractiveness sure. of yeah. Taekwondo. Yeah. Um, 
And, you know, there's been, I've seen local schools around here shut down. Oh. And I know a lot of that has to do with because of the, the popularity of MMA. Sure, for you sure. Know, a lot of these people... Why uh, choose you know, that why, if you can choose yeah, this? Yeah, and, yeah, and I would hope that, uh, you know, I, I, I feel bad for some of these businesses. I, I like traditional martial arts. I like just the, the, the tradition. It's yeah. cool. They've been around forever. Yeah. Well, Taekwondo hasn't been around that long, but... No, but the but tradition it's still, is there. It's still, it's yeah, very, it's still it's, traditional. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of culture, yeah. cultural um, sure. things with it. There's a lot of history with it. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's sad to see some of these traditional martial artists go through such a tough time when they don't have to. They can adapt, they can kind of readjust, and they can, they can um, you know, make some changes. And maybe if, if, if you are a struggling uh, Taekwondo school and things aren't going that well for you because you just don't have much enrollment, maybe you can add this and be attractive, you know, sure. attract, for you know, the, this other, generation. For other, yeah, and, yeah, new, yeah, yeah, new, yeah, a new, new generation, that's, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, so sure. that's, that's another thing about it, you know, I, I, sure. I, I've seen a lot of struggling Taekwondo schools and a couple of right around here that have, you know, closed or, or whatever. Yeah, for, for obvious reasons. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, it, it does sound like a potential cure. Yeah. And it's, it's great. You seem to have it quite well formed in you and you have the capacity to, mm -hmm. it sounds like you have definitely the capacity to, to bring people over that gap. Mm -hmm. Well, I just wanted to add that I know like Kiro dojos are definitely struggling with that. Like the age is really like getting older and older. Yeah. Like, young people are not into yeah. Aikido anymore whatsoever. I've, I've, I, that restaurant that I told about, talked about earlier, like, the Cuban restaurant that yeah. I recommended, uh -huh. there's an Aikido school like kind of like two blocks okay. up from it and it shut down. I bet. I yeah. Mean, yeah. It's just like Aikido is just not a popular thing anymore. Yeah. And for, again, for clear reasons, mm -hmm. but it's just... Right now, it has trouble understanding how mm -hmm. to bridge that. It's just mm -hmm. really struggling. But this, yeah. but this doesn't sound as hopeless. <laughs> yeah, I hope. I, I, you know, maybe I'm just, you know, I hope something can become of it. You know, I, sure. I have a, a passion for for Taekwondo to, to stick around and yeah. improve, and and, yeah. and I hope others do as well. You know. Yeah. Um, so I hope it. Hope, hope something happens with it. You know, I would sure. hate to see Taekwondo just fade off into the ether, you know, and kind of, yeah, yeah. or just be nothing but, you know, the little kids yes. thing, you know, where it's yeah, got yeah. so much more potential that nobody's taking advantage of. Right. So. Yeah. so. Sweet. This is yeah. way bigger than I thought. <laughs> 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 I thought we are going to look just more at your path, but the yeah. future is awesome. Yeah. So anything you want to add before we finish up? Your um, last thoughts? I I don't think so. so. I, I think it's, it was cool to meet up and for sure. have a talk. I appreciate it's it. It's crazy. It's crazy yeah. that we did. Yeah. We met through YouTube, <clears throat> Skype, and meeting up live is a blast. So yeah. we should definitely. And yeah. So now I'm in Port I'm in Oregon. You won't be this year, but next time we meet, hopefully we can film some videos on the mat. Yeah. Do another talk. See uh -huh. what changed in the meantime. So mm -hmm. for sure we should continue this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you very much. It was <laughs> such a pleasure. Yeah. Cool.